<coughs> Good morning everyone and uh, this is one more lecture about urology. This one is about urological infections. Now uh, basically to tell you about urological infections um, whenever there is urological infections like uh, UTIs or prostitutes or whatever is the infection. Uh, basically, um, most of the infections uh, which are not complicated, they don't need any surgical intervention. Um, by the way, um, Whenever like we take, I take physical classes, so basically I uh, substitute this infections or this lecture with some other important topic. So, <clears throat> uh, but now as it is online class, so of course we don't have limited lectures, but I am including this lecture as well. And... Uh, the topic which I will talk about in the urological infections in detail is basically tuberculosis because that one may need um, some surgical infections uh, like surgical intervention. So just to tell you like infections, okay, what are the infections, okay, like there could be UTIs, like uh, we collectively call them UTIs. Um, pyelonephritis can be there. Um, there could be prostitutes. Prostitutes, right. And there could be um, epi. Did. Mitis, right? I, I don't know about the spelling if it's correct or not, but let me check. Epi did, di, okay, yes, epi didn't add epididymitis. So, uh, and also, like, we can, I think, like, this one is okay, just let it go like this. Up. And any XYZ infections, right? Uh, like orchitis, so simply uh, all these are infections of uh, or urological infections. And boy, like in females, of course, if they are the gynecologists which deals most of the infections, as we know, like self angitis and all these things, of course, like uh, uh, they are like the gynecologists are the one which deal so. Uh, to tell you, like, uh, of course, I will talk about uh, these things first of all, and then I will go on to the tuberculosis topic. Okay. So, uh, as I told you, like, the surgical intervention nowadays uh, is rarely needed, especially after the advent of all this newer uh, antibiotics, right? Uh, but for example, uh, like, uh, and that's why, you know, what we use is like uncomplicated urinary tract infections or uncomplicated UTIs and complicated UTIs, right? So, uh, just saying. Uh, now, one of the things, for example, uh, uh, which we have to uh, cover is, uh, um, here is, uh, complicated urinary tract infection like I will talk about that a little okay so what happens by the way whenever there is for example some complicated UTI uh, like complicated UTIs by the way they occur when there is some underlying abnormalities like uh, some anatomical problem of the genital urinary system so of course like in that case if there is an atomic abnormality, so they, they correct it, okay. Uh, but so, uh, basically, the infection occurs as a result of that anatomical abnormality. So, 
uh, the thing and uh, uh, for example someone who have um, some other factors like you know obstructed kidney uh, ureter uh, for example you know sometimes due to infections there is development of abscess or uh, if there is any foreign body sometimes like due to infection there could be um, fistula formation then of course we go for surgery uh, so the approach will be same like uh, in case of any complicated infection of course you are going to first take the cultures uh, you will have to initiate the antibiotics you have to investigate um, the source of infection uh, maybe uh, like in the same way you will take the history you will do the physical examination uh, and then you will do for the go for the lab or radiological examinations like uh, uh, ultrasound CT scan x-ray sometimes what you can say voiding um, like urethrogram all these things can be done okay so I remember we cannot perform surgery in presence of infections so the general approach is uh, again history examination investigation diagnosis of infection diagnosing or checking the source of the infection and uh, then of course treatment of that infection and once the infection is treated then they go for more investigations to check for any um, abscess formation any underlying problem if there is any okay so uh and of course, whenever there is infection, how the patient present? The patient present with fever, malaise, anorexia, chills, rigors, tenderness, uh, all the things are there. So, uh, uh, okay. Now, the important thing that, uh, but whenever you know that, then the, whenever there is what you can say, uh, obstruction in the urinary tract or there is a infected obstruction, it is an emergency treat that as soon as possible uh, so that's a very important thing okay now the important thing here is what that um, for example if there is an abscess so you are going to train that draining uh, uh, <laughs> by whatever mean is possible for example if there is abscess in the kidney drain that if there is any abscess anywhere uh, along the genital urinary tract we have to drain that drainage is very 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 important thing okay in that case um, uh, like uh, because if you will not drain of course you know uh, the patient may have sepsis or septic shock uh, and for example uh, sometime due to that abscess or sometime due to that thing you know there could be obstruction in the urinary tract and our next lecture is about obstruction anyways uh, the patient may develop hydronephrosis uh, like this. So, and so, for example, you know, uh, the story goes like this way. Sometimes, you know, the patient present with infection and uh, what you found is a ureteric or like a kidney stone, a renal stone, or for example, a ureteric stone or a bladder stone. Any stone can be there. So, this thing is important. Uh, so, uh, that is what you can say a very um, general overview about the infections okay but uh, like why i am not uh, going in more detail as i told you that most of the infections they are nowadays uh, are dealt medically uh, just by antibiotics you know of course we can treat the treat the infection but yes if there is any anatomic abnormality we have to uh, correct that so uh, that that's uh, about this thing now uh, one of the thing uh, which uh, we can cover more is uh, um, yes, one of the thing which uh, I think uh, you guys have covered uh, basically in the first semester we covered is called as um, Fournier's gangrene, right? Uh, I don't know how many of you remember this thing, but we have done this thing. Uh, so Fournier gangrene is basically, you know, it's it's like it's an infection uh, uh, by uh, what you can say a variety of microorganisms. In which like there is there are all like uh, uh, 
aerobes, anaerobes, gram positives and gram negatives and basically there is a necrotizing type of infection. So it is like uh, necrotizing fasciitis when it occurs in the genitals. Uh, we call it as fondius kickery. So what happened basically the patient present with too much pain, tenderness, swelling, discoloration and necrosis and sometimes there is crapitus also and sometimes there is very bad smelling discharges also. So uh, as I told you it is uh, polymicrobial, uh, variety of organisms are there. So uh, now the management basically depends on how much the disease is progressed. Uh, for example, uh, what happened like basically it's necrotizing fasciitis. So necrotic tissue must be removed anywhere in the body. Necrotic tissue must be removed. So of course in that case they have to perform surgery um, and they have to perform um, what you can say um, what you can say so they have to remove the pus, they have to, uh, they have to uh, remove that area. Okay, so that's important. Then you can say like, you know, uh, prostatitis, uh, prostatitis, okay, uh, prostatitis, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, prostatitis, for example, you know, uh, we know like there is prostatitis as well. There is acute prostatitis, there is chronic prostatitis. Um, again, the most common organism in prostatitis is E. coli. Um, it can occur with other as well, for example, Staphylococcus aureus, Staphylococcus, uh, Streptococcus uh, and Neisseria gonorrhea uh, or Chlamydia, uh, which are STDs as well. So, uh, again, like in this one, what happens is like the patient present with uh, fever, chills, rigors, pain, things like this, right? Um, and... Uh, uh, now, what is the treatment of prostatitis? Again, like, like you know, uh, the most commonly thing is given is basically antibiotics okay but sometimes again prostatic abscess can develop so of course whenever there is abscess uh, the patient present with rectal pain and all these things so of course you have to um, drain that this is a general rule whenever there is any abscess treat that so again surgery only comes in action whenever there is any abscess, whenever there is anything like this. The same thing with uh, uh, all the other things, right? That if there is any abscess, abscess, no matter it is epididymitis or chitis, uh, but whenever there is any abscess, we drain the abscess. Um, same thing, you know, uh, we I told you about pyelonephritis. So pyelonephritis, uh, which is more common in females again it presents with fever pain rigor like the same thing but uh, what happens that uh, nowadays you know uh, we just give antibiotics to the patient and antibiotics uh, they have what you can say they have a very good action uh, but again if there is a uh, there is an abscess we, we we drain that okay so in that case it is called as pyonephrosis so, uh, pyonephrosis, right? So, pyonephrosis means what? Pyo means pus, nephrosis means kidney. So, um, like the patient can present with pyonephrosis. So, in that case, of course, what to do? Uh, they can drain it, okay? Uh, so, of course, like they, they, they do open nephrostomy or nephrectomy, for example, if the kidney is destroyed and they give antibiotics to the patient. So, this thing. So uh, now uh, in this specific lecture what we will discuss is tuberculosis. So as we know tuberculosis you have done in internal medicine, you have done in infectious diseases, you have done it a long, long, lot of time. We know it is mycobacterium tuberculosis and uh, one third of the world population is infected by this thing right. And uh, what is the organism? Is It is mycobacterium tuberculosis and it's a very slow growing uh, what you can say multiplying uh, organism. It is acid fast bacilli. So uh, now uh, this one, uh, basically most of the time it spreads by blood, hematogenous infection. And uh, uh, of course, like because the kidneys are far away from each other. So most of the time, just one kidney is affected. Okay. Now you can see 
account for 10% of tuberculosis cases, cases most 20 to 40 years of age, male versus female 2 ratio 1. Very uncommon in children, spread of organism to kidney through blood. Other parts become involved by direct extension. So now basically what happens is there is formation of granuloma. What type of granuloma? Caseating granuloma. I like I think this thing uh, was so common like I studied this thing first time in pathology when I was in fourth year and still I remember that you know like tuberculosis gave caseating granuloma. So you can see over here granuloma is formed okay um, so now when this granuloma is formed you know the mycobacteria and the pus cells they drain into the urine and when they drain into the urine they can be uh, recognized or they can be we can do test to catch this thing when we don't treat it it can form an abscess okay and uh, when the abscess will become increase in size okay so of course it can cause uh, sign and symptoms okay and we or you can say it is called as tuberculous pyonephrosis which I was talking about before so uh, now uh, uh, this abscess uh, uh, basically uh, what you can say uh, later on it is also called as putty kidneys like you know they see you can see there is a obvious abnormality and later on it can become calcified okay in which th the uh, case it is called as cement kidney okay so this thing can be seen even on x-ray okay uh, so uh, you can see over here caseous abscess, fibrosis, calcification, papillary necrosis can occur and uh, obstruction of uh, this junction, you know, uropelvic junction, you know, obstruction can occur. So uh, this is basically uh, the pathological features. You can see over here, this is a fibrosed kidney. Uh, you can see over here, this is calcified with fibrosis and you can see over here the ureters, you know, uh, even the ureter also have nodules and there is stricture formation there is granuloma there is fibrosis and all these things and even it can uh, in fact the bladder in that case you know um, urethral orifice inflamed and edematous urethral orifice can get obstructed there will be tuberculous ulcers there will be tuberculous inflammation and bladder wall become fibrosed and contraction can occur again some of the photographs you can see uh, like here they are showing you ulcers and what you can say uh, craters you see so now um, anyone who have this tuberculosis uh, infection how they present uh, basically they present with uh, so okay there will be like what you can say the constitutional symptoms of tuberculosis like fever anorexia uh, weight loss night sweats okay these things will be there so now uh, most of the time the um, early feature can be uh, you can say urinary frequency um, and urgency and burning and urgent continence uh, dysuria like pain during urination hematuria blood and urine suprapubic pain um, uh, decreased stream or straining ineffective voiding or anything can be there so uh, the patient basically come and say that you know they have to urinate more often even in the night they have to wake up and and go again and again okay so uh, this dysuria painful micturition uh, can can be present even there could be suprabupic pain okay all these things can be there okay so now uh, the important things to uh, to remember um, that uh, See, uh, these are the upper unit tract symptoms like pain and gross hematuria. In males, there will be hematospermia, azospermia, like you can say, a sperm with blood or absence of sperms or chronic epididymoorchitis. Epididymoorchitis, yes. And in females, like there will be menstrual irregularities, pelvic pain syndrome, and infertility. So, what to do? Um, uh, these are the constitutional symptoms which are there, right? So on examination, what we can found, uh, by the way, we can found like maybe we can palpate the kidneys or maybe we can see like the kidneys have 
uh, are enlarged or kidneys have what you can say the surface is not smooth things like this right but of course very hard to palpate kidneys in a person who is like fat then of course we go for investigations okay so now investigations again number of investigations can be done for example you can take the urine you can send it for culture and sensitivity you can do general urine examination for any abnormal cells or abnormal things and of course like what they do they take this thing uh, they uh, check and they grow they culture it and they form that they have microbacterium tuberculosis or tuberculosis infection uh, you can see over here purified protein, the PPD test, tuberculin test, or Montox test, which you have already covered this thing in internal medicine. This is no different from that. So they do it in the same way. So if, of course, if it, they come positive, it means like the patient has this condition. So uh, then we can do PCR nowadays also. And uh, we can do imagings like, uh, um, of course, X-ray, as you can see over here calcifications can be seen on x-ray uh, sometimes the HS x-ray become came back as positive and uh, we can do intravenous urography so intravenous urography as we know like we we give uh, them what you can say that uh, um, contrast and then we take the images and uh, we can see the kidneys uh, like either they have any problem or not right so the, like these are the tests which we can do uh, uh, in, in these patients uh, so of course like a tuberculosis abscess like it they they are a tumor you can say and they are a space occupying lesion so they like of course in that case we will found that the calluses are not normal okay maybe the bladder come back as shrunken or maybe we can see the wall irregularities in these patients uh, one very important thing which we can do is uh, uh, okay intravenous urography so see calic distortion occlusion destruction and all the things can be seen or we can do intravenous okay the same thing okay uh, we can do cystoscopy okay you can see over here they are showing severe calicil and parenchymal destruction and you can see over here contraction of the bladder uh, and stricture at the distal left ureter right so all, all these things can be seen on this one. Uh, then, of course, we can go for a cystoscopy. We can do a CT scan. We can, uh, on CT scan, of course, we can see it in more detail, see the calluses are destroyed. Hydronephrosis can be seen. All these things can be seen. Calcifications can be seen. And uh, not endoscopy, but cystoscopy, right? Uh, it is called a cystoscopy cystoscopy so of course like cystoscopy uh, by that way we can see the bladder from inside and we can see if there is any fibrosis if there's any strictures whatever we can see these things right we can take a biopsy even okay but biopsy is like generally not done no it not advised before medical therapy okay so uh, okay once uh, the diagnosis is done and mean why now we know that the patient have tuberculosis then we go for treatment so treatment is simply, guys, we will give them ATTs. What is ATTs? It is anti-tuberculosis drugs. Uh, so of course, like uh, we give them whatever is like the tuberculosis of any region, we give them ATTs. We give them anti-tuberculosis drugs. So of course, what they do, they start the patient on ATTs. They take care of their diet and they uh, keep on doing follow-up. So we know like in the first, uh, we first of all, we give like a combination of four drugs. Then we do a continuation phase like in which we give two drugs, isoniazid and rifampin. There is thembutol, there is pyrazinamide. So we keep on giving this thing. Again, the same tuberculosis topic, no different than what you have covered in internal medicine and infectious diseases. We give them isoniazid, rifampicin, and pyrazinamide and nithambutol. Okay, these are the side effects which are written over here. Um, again, this is the same thing. Okay, with dosages, how much we give, and the main side effects. So now you will be thinking, what is the role of surgery now? Okay, surgery again 
if we found that there is calcification or there is large granuloma so of course like after at least four to six weeks of medical therapy we go for surgery and of course wh wh how wh why we do surgery we have to remove that focus of infection okay so or we have to remove any obstruction if, it's, if it is there for example if there is any stricture formation maybe they can put stent or maybe they can reconstruct that that area okay so uh, that's the, that's the only role of surgery in this all case okay or if the kidney is not viable anymore it is too much destroyed or distorted of course what they will do they are going to remove that kidney so removal of obstruction or it can be done for nephrectomy or partial nephrectomy or drainage of abscess which i am I'm, I'm talking from the start okay so see these are the indications of nephrectomy when there is a non functioning kidney with or without calcification extensive disease involving the whole kidney with hypertension and urethral pelvic junction obstruction or there is coexisting renal carcinoma or or we can go for a reconstructive surgery for urethral structures augmentation cystoplasty or to divert the urine to the other side or to make a new bladder so that's all guys about this one okay very easy to understand and we, because we know all the things before about tuberculosis and infection so thank you so much for listening i will see you in the next lecture